It's four ounces of white Cotswold, which is the bra brand, the brand of sheep. Sheep are not a brand, Lisa. They are a breed. They're a breed. Hello everyone, welcome to the Stop Drop In It podcast, episode 23. My name is Lisa and I am on Long Island, New York. It is another glorious day out here. If it is your first time here, welcome. Sometimes I sit outside when the weather is nice because I, I, just, I just love sitting outside and listening to the birds. Um, and then other times I am down in the basement with my whole big like light set up and everything because we don't have a good spot with natural light inside the house. So I like to take advantage when I can of the glorious weather. And I'd say it's about right around 70, 71 degrees today. It's kind of perfection. So yeah, so I'm snatching up the chance to sit outside again today because it's about to get pretty hot in a couple days here. For those of you who have been with me before, welcome back. Today, we are going to get started with what am I wearing? So I dug out today my cherry blossom cardigan and this um, this is one of the first sweaters that I made. I think I finished it two summers ago and this was a pattern that I saw in one of the knit scene magazines. Um, I'll have to dig out the issue and see exactly which one, but it's a pattern called Cherry Blossom Cardigan by Catherine Pritchett, and really not that many people have knit it, but I really enjoyed it when I saw it, and um, let me stand up. It's kind of the perfect little cardigan for, for today's weather because it's made of uh, a lightweight fingering yarn, and it's got this all-over lacy stitch. So let's see. The yarn that I used was Madeline Tosh Light and I believe the color is called Moonstone. So um, yeah, it's just like a really light purple, which is my favorite. Actually, I think like the title of today's episode probably needs to be like all the purple knits because you guys know how I'm always saying that purple is my favorite color and I always buy all this purple yarn and then I don't show you guys anything purple. Today's episode is going to change that. <laughs> I have a lot of purple stuff to show you today which just makes me so happy. So yeah I don't um I don't remember like the type of stitch but it was a really really simple pattern that kind of seemed to go on forever um, and it's got let me see it's got like a a v-neck so like the button starts over here so i'll kind of button it so that you guys can see what that looks like and i don't ever actually wear it with the buttons but you could um yeah i think that i found these buttons for it when i visited the webs warehouse in uh massachusetts a few summers ago when we were on a road trip we got to swing by the webs warehouse which was really cool and I'm pretty sure that that's where I found these buttons so I'll just give you a close-up of the perfection that is the button right there so let's see the construction of this cardigan I'm trying to remember how it was knit I'm pretty sure that it was knit for the most part all in one piece like starting bottom up and just back and forth like forever um, and then there was shaping on the sides in the front and I think that it split like for the front and the back at the at the armholes and the neck shaping I don't really remember it was a while ago that I knit this but the construction was really really simple um, yeah I did have to pick up for the sleeves and knit those down to the cuff and just a little bit of shaping and oh I think I had to pick up like all the stitches around too for the for the button band when it was all done so yeah there was a lot of picking up stitches in this one from what I remember so but overall it was one of those knits that was simple but took 
kind of forever. And it was like kind of, kind of repetitive with the lace pattern. I did actually mess it up in one place and I'm trying to remember which side of the cardigan it is on. You can actually see it pretty clearly. I think it might be right here. Um, I'm gonna take it off and show you guys. I, I just made a mistake. I think it was like a four row pattern repeat. And then I just, I think I got mixed up in one place, but I didn't fix it because, yeah, here it is over here. It's exactly where I just showed you. So you can see there's a clear, um, there's a clear part there where you can see that it's not quite right. I just don't care. Um, yeah, but I just remember taking this off to show you. I just remembered that this really did take forever and I actually commemorated that with this label that um, a fiber share partner sent me a couple years ago. I'm pretty sure she might have gotten these from nitpicks because I think I've seen them there. But yeah, this one definitely took forever. So anyway, um, that is my cherry blossom cardigan and I'll probably leave it off right now because the weather is just glorious and I really don't need to wear it. But when the sun sets later, it'll be nice to just throw this on. It's kind of one of those knits that's very air conditioned because it's just very holy. So, all right. So let's move on to finished objects. So I do not have any knitted finished objects for you guys today, but I think, I think last week I had three. And that was kind of a lot that was that was more than usual so I think you guys will hopefully forgive me um, but I do have a finished yarn so it's not knit but it is something that I will knit in the future I'm gonna take this um, off the hanger this one took a couple of days to dry actually which is why it was on the hanger oh my goodness you guys this yarn is in so many little little bits and pieces because I did it on my drop spindle um, I didn't bring my drop spindle out here but this was my my largest drop spindle that I have shown you guys plenty of times which is really great for doing bulkier yarns and so um, this is this is my art yarn and I have no idea how many yards I got but it's all plied together and it is all completely washed and finished there's kind of there's kind of a lot of it <laughs> a lot of it here i think this is probably the largest amount of yarn that i've made with one colorway which makes sense because i had six ounces um, of just the rainbow yarn from paradise fibers it was called over the rainbow and it was there Stellina Merino blend um, and then they had given us also a bunch of these little green I, I got the chartreuse green colorway but these are little like wool locks um, and so I just kind of had no idea what to do with them so I just spun them through something just buzzed by my ear probably a wasp that's okay not gonna panic <laughs> um, yeah, so I decided to just play and have fun just experimenting with this yarn. Um, it's probably not like the best yarn I've ever made, but I've never tried to make an art yarn before. This is only my third ever hand spun yarn. So I'm still proud of it. And I think out in the sunlight, um, I know when, I, when it was drying, I was really able to see that blue Stellina. So I'm hoping that the sunshine picks up on that little bit of sparkle on the camera. I'll try to take some still photos of it to, to insert. Um, yeah, so I guess the next, the next step is that I need to figure out how many yards I have. And I still haven't done that with my other one. So probably not gonna do that anytime soon until I'm ready to knit something with it but I just it's so pretty it kind of reminds me of a very um, amateur like knit collage yarn 
just with like all the different textures and stuff but I mean obviously it's not nearly as nice as what those amazing ladies in India spin um, but yeah I just I hope that you guys can see the sparkle it I think it turned out so cool I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this I know that a lot of people will weave with their art yarns um, I've never tried to weave anything I don't have any kind of loom or anything so yeah I haven't gone down that rabbit hole yet um, but yeah I, I what do you guys think I should do with this probably have enough to make a cowl and some mittens I, a scarf a wrap maybe a wrap a shawl use it I don't know I have so much <laughs> I, I have no I have no idea so give me your ideas, but um, yeah, this took maybe two months for me to do on my drop spindle. Um, and it was really fun, and that is my finished object for today. So I have some new whips to share with you guys. So let's move on to whips. So really quick, before we start diving into my whips, I had a number of people who said they would definitely be interested in doing a Harry Potter knitting magic book knit along so I'm probably gonna shoot like another little video and just put that up on my channel to announce when we will officially start the knit along I'm probably I'm thinking maybe June 1st would be a good time because that gives us like another week to maybe start getting some materials together um, I think I'll be starting with Hedwig I wound up my yarn but I do not have the right size double pointed needles so I have not yet cast that on so I think that we will do an official kickoff on June 1st and probably leave it running through the end of 2021 that way everybody can have some time to knit Christmas gifts for their Harry Potter fans in their lives and all of that good stuff so look for um, uh, a little bit of a video like a short little video sometime soon that I will just be announcing the knit along and the details once I get those all sorted out and I will then be opening a thread in my stop drop and knit Ravelry group so it's stop drop and knit podcast on Ravelry so you guys can look for the knit along thread over there and I'll probably also have um, a hashtag available for people to follow on Instagram because I know not everybody is comfortable using Ravelry. So yeah, all right, so now let's move on to whips. So last podcast, I mentioned that I was all excited to start knitting some summer spring sweaters. And so I have a couple of brand new cast ons to share with you guys today. And the first one, is a garment out of this book knit happy with self-striping yarn this is by stephanie lotvin and she is also the designer of the uh, garland pullover that so many of you are eagerly waiting for the pattern release for that which still don't know exactly um but yeah so i have a brand new cast on and i cast on to make the bright axis t I it felt this is like the reason that I purchased this book pretty much was that so I could make this tea um, it's so cute and so clever with the construction um, it's also a very mindless <laughs> knit and I was needing something just that was gonna go around and around and around and around and around for like weeks I was just I was needing that kind of project because I had finished a whole bunch of stuff and I just I didn't have anything that I could just pick up and work on without thinking about it so I got started on the bright axis tea and this is what I have done so far it is like an inch of ribbing and maybe two inches of body so not a whole lot to show, but I am using stash yarn. So 
Another knit along that I've got going on is my stop, drop and knit your stash along. And I have been checking out all of your projects. A lot of you guys have been posting in that thread. Thank you so much for keeping that thread really active. I've also been trying to keep up with the hashtag on Instagram a bit too, and it's really fun to see all the amazing things you guys are creating with your stash. So yeah, so if you didn't know about that knit along, basically just anything that you have in your stash, doesn't matter if it's new stash or old stash, um, new as of pre-2021, use it, make something from it. Um, it doesn't mean you can't buy new stuff because goodness knows I'm constantly <laughs> acquiring new things. But yeah, the, the whole idea is to just find those things that you purchased when you were excited about them and you just hadn't found the either the project for them or the motivation to find a project or you had a project in mind but just weren't feeling motivated to start it that was what i was trying to say so i've got that thread going and at some point i will be picking prizes from it and some of you have have done quite a bit of stash knitting i see like a lot of the same people posting which is really great obviously the more entries you make the more chances you will have to win a prize when i do a random prize thing um but so let me show you the yarn that i'm using for this um so also in my fiber share swap two summers ago 2019 um i got actually i had a really nice like i had a partner who i was sending to um and my partner fizz fizzled out on me and never actually followed through on the swap so then the partner that i sent to had sent me like a few skeins which is in another whip that i will show you in a little bit um but when your partner in fiber share swap fizzles out on you and doesn't follow through the organizers will will work to send you something because they do collect a slight a small fee from everybody who participates in the event that people don't follow through so that they can then purchase and follow through. So this was what they sent me um, when my partner fizzled out and failed to send me my part of the swap. The knit share, what is it called? The fiber share, there we go. The fiber share people sent me this beautifully naturally dyed purple yarn. And so this, I think it's done on like a Knit Picks Hawthorne base. And so whoever the dyer was for them, don't remember the name of the dyer, um, but she had dyed to sell on Knit Picks and this was dyed with logwood. And so I've had, this is about 700 and something yards that I have had sitting in my stash for two years and I didn't know what to do with. So I, for the, for the patterns in this book you need i needed like more than one skein of a solid color to pair with one skein of the rainbow stripe yarn and so this was um, a great amount of yardage for that and then what i did was i dug through all of my rainbow yarn from julia over at knitterly things because i've got like i've been subscribing to her clubs for like three years and i i can't I, I don't knit as soon as they come in. It, it piles up. And so I have accumulated quite a Knitterly Things stash. But I found this color and it is called Squash Blossoms. And this actually was more recent. This was from August 2020. So this was just from last summer. And so this is that colorway. And I was thinking that that would actually pair really nicely with this. A lot of the other colors in my Knitterly Things stash are much more bright because these are like dyed with acid dyes. Um, and it was really hard to find like the right shade of purple to go with this beautiful naturally dyed logwood shade. But this one I thought would go really well. Um, so. I've got quite a bit of stockinette <laughs> to knit on the purple before I'm going to get to the point of even needing to wind this up and casting on with this. 
But I just thought that I would go ahead and show you my pairing, and this is for the Bright Axis Tea by St Stephanie Lotvin. So this has been one that I've been wanting to cast on ever since I purchased the book several months ago. And so I'm just glad that I finally did and I finally have that going. So that is my first new cast on. Um, I have another brand new cast on. And then I have a couple of in progress that you guys have seen before. So do you guys remember last week in the last podcast when I said I had just finally finished all of the test knitting and sample knitting that I had committed to and that I was so excited not to have any more knitting deadlines. That lasted, I think, one day. <laughs> I just I, These things happen. I'm not going to go crazy with the test knits, you guys, but okay, so here's what happened. <laughs> here's what happened. I just, I went on Instagram. I was just wasting time on Instagram, like like, like one does, right? And at, at the particular moment that I happened to log on to Instagram and browse through, Caitlin Hunter posted a really, really beautiful, like sneak peek of a design that is going to be coming out next month. And I happened to notice that she was also looking for test knitters. I've never test knit for Caitlin Hunter before, but I knit a lot of her things. And I was, as I said last week, I was looking for some summery spring garments to cast on. And so I, I just happened to accidentally kind of sign up and throw my name into the hat saying, hey, I would love to test knit a size three. And then I just, I happened to get in just in the nick of time because they had so many requests for like the first handful of sizes in the Ravelry thread. I went and I joined, like I wasn't even in her Ravelry group. I just saw it on Instagram. And then I went over, they were like, test knit, go sign up um, through the Ravelry thread. So I went over and I joined her Ravelry group and I said, you know, I'd love to test knit a size three. Here is my Instagram, here is my Ravelry. And they actually cut off the submission right after I posted, which I found out like the next day because they had so many people. So they cut it off at like number 71. I was post number 70. So I like just snuck in there. I've never tested it for her before, but um, I just I just got like really lucky and I got picked. Um, so I'm also doing this out of stash yarn and this is so cute, you guys. I'm gonna post a picture of the sneak that she posted on Instagram so that you can see why I got excited about this. Um, and this is what I have so far. I'm gonna be able to show you at least as much as what she sneaked. I just can't show a full garment release until the pattern comes out. So it's a little lacy design. I'm gonna maybe put my hand, let's see. I don't want this to come off the needles, but all right. I'll try to put my hand in here so that you guys can see the stitch pattern. I wanna open it up. Um, all right, I think you guys can see that pretty well. Put that like closer to the camera. So it's so cute. And um, let's see. So I have knit her um, her Tanya. I've knit her Tecumseh. I've knit her um, Maratima, which I just wore last week. So yeah, so I, I was like, you know what? I love knitting her garments. They're some of my favorites. And this is one that I'm definitely gonna to wanna to knit anyway. I've been really looking for summer things to cast on and this just happened to come through my Instagram at exactly the time that I was looking for something like this to cast on. I figured I could use stash yarn for it. All right, so let me show you what I'm using. Um, the yarn that I'm using, I had in my stash, um, I had a mini skein set in my stash from Backyard Fiberworks that I picked up 
from Maryland Sheep and Wool in 2018. So this was the first year that I went. And so there were these colors all in a pack together. Um, and so I really wanted to use these. Now I'm not actually gonna use all of these colors. I was contemplating it. Um, and I was not sure exactly if I was gonna have enough yardage because Caitlin was still kind of estimating on the yardage and obviously like yardage depending on like what kind of yarn you use like she's using a rustic fingering from neighborhood fiber co and i'm using like a sock yarn so it, it could have a little bit of differences to it but so what i am doing is and i think i am gonna have enough with just my my singles here my my mini skeins i also have a main color um, I was a little bit worried that I wasn't going to have enough yardage in my mini skeins to use just four colors. Um, and I probably could have just used all of the colors, but I thought like I really wanted to, to do it like in a similar way to Caitlin's. And in the event that I was going to be a little bit short on yardage, I was trying to plan ahead and have something as a backup in case I did run out of my minis. And so I went on Ravelry and searched people's stash and I found somebody who was willing to sell me their mini skein pack from Backyard Fiberworks. Because you can't get it anymore. I'm not even sure that Backyard Fiberworks is still in business because I couldn't find their website and I don't know if they went out of business before the pandemic or, or I don't know. I don't really know the story there. Um, maybe if one of you guys know what happened at Backyard Fiber Works, let me know. Um, because I was kind of disappointed that I couldn't try to find something. So anyway, I decided to do, you'll see um, in, the, in the sneak peek that I'm going to, that I posted or I'm going to post of Caitlin's from Instagram, you'll see that she did four colors of the lacy stripe. And so she did kind of like a gray gradient. So she had like a dark gray, a medium gray, a light gray, and then she had like a yellow, like a mustard kind of yellow. And so I thought that this would be really, really nice together. So I've got this like, it's like a plum and then um, a lighter purple. So these are the first two lacy stripes that I've done so far and then I am ready to add this one to it. So this one is a little bit of a much lighter pink, but it's got speckles of all those colors in it. And then I'm gonna add in the pop of this uh, bright green color. So I just, I'm excited. I think that's gonna look so good. Um, and so, yeah, so I, you know, I'm not gonna be able to show you the whole thing, but, so I'm not actually gonna use these two colors in the end. So those two aren't gonna be part of it. And then, um, so I had also from Backyard Fiberworks, I had this same plum color in like a rustic fingering. Um, so I considered using that when it switches to the main body color. But then I found in my stash that I had um, also, I had two of these from Knitterly Things again, and these are 200 yards, so I had two. So I had 400 yards, so like a full skein of this color, and they look to me basically identical. I, even in the daylight out here, I really don't see a difference. And like, I wound up one of them already. Do you guys even see a difference? I mean, it looks, it looks identical. So I'm gonna use this because this is like also a sock yarn. The backyard fiber works that I'm doing for the lacy sections are a sock yarn. And that way the fabric of my garment will be more consistent than if I mixed a singles in with there with the rustic fingering type. Um, and there's gonna be this green is gonna separate the purples anyway. So they're not gonna be like right next to each other so i think it's perfect i don't think um i don't think anybody's going to be able to tell that it's a different dyer i think they look so similar um 
yeah, so I, I've got another test knit going on, but I'm really excited because I've never test knit for Caitlin Hunter before and I love all of her patterns. And this one, everybody's going to be knitting this one because it is such a good design. So I'm sure that a lot of you are going to want to knit it. Um, the test knit is due June 16th, so I am imagining that by the end of June, this will be available for everybody. So start going through your stash and find some mini skeins or some leftovers that you guys have and find like four different colors for the lacy stripes and then the main color in the lacy stripe the one main color is also used for the main body so i think the most yardage at least for my size which is a size three is basically like one skein of a solid color with a good amount of yardage like probably at least 450 yards so bigger size is probably two skeins of a um, solid yarn and then three coordinating colors or you could do all of the lacy stripes a different color which is what I considered as well so there are so many options and I think that it's gonna be so fun to see like the different color variations that everybody comes up with and so yeah, so that's my second um, purple garment <laughs> to share with you guys today. And now we're gonna move on to the whips that you guys have seen that I had already started. So you guys, I know I said I was gonna have this sock done by my next podcast. I don't, but in all fairness, I thought it was gonna be two weeks before I sat down to podcast again, and it has only been one. Um, but I still, I did make a little tiny bit of progress. So last time I had done the gusset, but I had not yet turned the heel. Um, and so, I mean, not the gusset, the heel flap, whatever that thing's called. I had done the heel flap and not yet turned the heel. So now I am partially through the gusset. I, I just am not wearing socks right now. So I don't see any like rush to get this done, but I will get this Easter sock done. I promise because it's it's been on the needle since Easter weekend, which is more than a month now. Easter was early April this year, wasn't it? This has been like six weeks. This is ridiculous, but this is what the finished sock will look like if I can just like knit on it a little bit. So again, Knitterly Things um, in the Jelly Bean Remix colorway. It's, that's still going. It's, yeah, but the heel, it's that same plum that I'm using actually. It's a different, it's a different base. So I think this is, I don't know. It's, it's a sli slightly different fiber content. I think this one might be like a 75, 25, and maybe the other one's like an 80, 20. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, so I'm still chugging away at the Easter socks. Just a little bit here and a little bit there. Just a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, so that was just a quick little update on that. But I have made more progress on my lightweight hipster shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And so I want to show you guys that because this one's getting close. This one is like approaching finished object status. We're not there yet. Um, all right, so this is the label just fell out of my ball of yarn, so I will show it to you. I'm knitting this from Magpie Fibers, swanky sock, also from my stash because this is what my really nice fiber share partner who didn't have to send yarn to me but felt bad when my partner flaked out on me she sent me this and it's beautiful um and so this is fiber fiber society number five so this had come from her stash and she passed it on to me and it's a merino nylon cashmere blend and let me hold it up it's gonna be a little hard again to show you what it looks like because it's a big lacy shawl but let me see and I've got a lot of stitch markers that are ready to come out now on my next row so I got quite a bit more of it done the 
last time I showed it to you, I had gotten this far. So I had just finished like the first uh, texture band section. And so this past week I did the garter stitch band, which was next up. And now I am like halfway through the next texture band. So the texture band starts with the very first um, of these big yarn over twisted cross crisscross stitch sections and there's like another little lacy kind of pattern in the middle which is hard to see I'm trying to open it up a little it's hard to see with the variegated yarn but then it goes all the way through the second set of crisscross yarn over stitches so that whole thing of like these two yarn overs is like one texture band section so I am now I'm like halfway through because I'm just about ready to start the next crisscross section which takes a long time I was looking at everybody's projects on Ravelry to see if other people were like cursing and swearing their way through those sections like I am not because it's hard but because the yarn overs when you go to slide them down your cable needle and try to get them back onto the actual needle part from the cord they get stuck and they like get twisted around each other so i am trying so hard to do really really loose yarn overs so that they don't get stuck as much but they're still getting stuck so i think that that's the secret though so if you guys decide to knit the lightweight hipster shawl make sure this is a public service announcement. Make sure you do your three yarn overs very loose. Otherwise, you're gonna curse your way through that whole row. And as you can see, it's really long. And when you're cursing your way through it and the stitches are constantly getting stuck, you swear a lot and you feel pretty miserable. Otherwise, it's a very enjoyable knit and it's very easy and I know that I'm gonna love this when it's done but I, I Tend to do my yarn over is pretty tight and it's never been a problem, but for the shawl Do not do tight yarn overs You're gonna want to keep them loose That is my advice to anybody who wants to knit either the lightweight hipster shawl or the regular I'm imagining that for the regular hipster shawl is probably the same thing so yeah it's a mix like people's review of this pattern were either like I hated knitting it because of this very thing or it was such a joy to knit they cast on like three more right away so I really think it depends on your tension for those yarn overs and how easily that works out for you so I've got to loosen up on this next round so that it doesn't take me an hour and a half to do one round and then after that it's gonna be like just easy going because then it's pretty much gonna be like garter stitch the rest of the way so this is I think we're now like 70% done with it so it, it's getting close and yeah it's really soft this yarn is is really really lovely it's really you guys can see like hopefully a little bit when I stretch it out how lovely it's gonna look with those crisscross stitches so it's really hard to see like shawls when they're all scrunched up but yeah I'm excited about this one I, I have been having fun with a, a small amount of swearing every time I get to that row which is like four times in the whole thing <laughs> so that is all my whips and that is all of my knitted content so the only thing I have left is spinning I don't have any acquisitions today you guys I did stress purchase something a couple days ago but it's not coming till Monday so technically I don't have any acquisitions this week but there is a stretch a stress purchase which I will be excited to show you guys next week um, yeah so let's move on to spinning So in last week's podcast, I shared with you that I had started a brand new spinning project and that I am spinning one of the sheep from Tabitha's farm. She um, has this cute little Cotswold sheep named Clover 
I'll insert the pictures again because they're just so cute. Um, Clover is either two or three. I think last week I said that she was three, but she might actually only be two. Not sure. They just had a big birthday party for her back in March. Um, so I have like four ounces in this paper shopping bag here and this is just what I'm carrying in it and it's four ounces of white Cotswold which is the brand the brand of sheep sheep are not a brand Lisa they are a breed they're a breed Cotswold is a breed of sheep so yeah I I have one well, I have two singles. One of them is still on my drop spindle. So I'm spinning it really fine. This is the first one that I took off of the spindle. Um, and I'm, I'm having such a lovely time spinning this. Obviously this is a big contrast to the rainbow and bright green chartreuse fiber that I showed you guys at the start of the podcast. Um, so this is completely different. Um, but I think I'm gonna make a two ply yarn again out of this. And so it's it's pretty even, but there are definitely some spots that are a little bit thinner and some spots that are like a little bit thicker. Um, but I think overall, like you can see this, this pretty thin right there, which is kind of what I'm going for, sort of. I mean, I'm still a new spinner. This would be, my fifth yarn because I still have one that needs to be plied. So I've shown you guys three completed yarns. So this is my fifth ever spinning project. So this is all filled up as well. And this is on a very lightweight spindle, my first ever spindle. Um, so I'm pretty sure that I told you guys last week that I thought that the staple length of Cotswolds was really short, but then I was looking it up because it felt like it was breaking away like really, really shorter. See, I'm pulling it from back here, um, but I actually looked it up, you know, on Google and stuff. and. Cause I don't have the fleece and fiber source book yet, which I definitely want to get. But so I did like a little bit of research and it turns out that the staple length is actually kind of one of the longer ones. So, I mean, I'm not sure why I thought it was so um, short, but I thought that um, I'll spin just like a little bit of it. See, and then it, it goes right away. So I'm definitely with this spindle having to do a lot of park and draft so let me see if i can adjust this a little bit down um so that you guys can see uh, maybe I'll, I'll spin a little it came apart um so with the last with the art yarn that i was spinning i was able to um i didn't have to park and draft so much because i had gotten really 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 used to it so you want to spin in a clockwise direction i know that i have a few people interested in oh no see it's like totally full so it's starting to just kind of come off of my spindle uh i mean i am not an expert at all but i just wanted to show you guys a little bit um since i did still have it on the spindle so I've, I'm having to do a bit of pre-drafting um, and anything drafted like more than that, it kind of starts to come apart. And then I just go clockwise a bit and it, and then I park it and then I'll draft a bit and then you let go and it turns into yarn and it's really, really cool. Um, probably it still has some twists so I can do that again. And I'm just gonna spin that and I'm not really good this one it twists back on itself so so quickly that I'm not I'm not able to just keep it spinning and do my drafting at the same time with this fiber but yeah so that's that's kind of what this one is looking like it's got a little bit of a halo 
to it. Um, it's not the softest. Well, I'll probably adjust the camera back in a second. But yeah, it's a little stuck there. So this, this is totally filled up. It's totally ready to come off the spindle and have me start fresh. Um, adjust the camera back up a little higher. So yeah, so this is my current spinning project, but let me pull this apart. So the if I pull over here, like really close, it doesn't want to come apart. So this, this came apart easily. So I'd say that this is the staple length that I'm getting, which I don't know how many inches that is, but it feels really short to me because it's so fluffy. And as soon as I get it to this point, like it just really wants to pull apart. So then I'm like, to get it really thin, I'm doing more pre-drafting on itself to lengthen it up. So it's when you like, you still, you draft the fibers and pull them apart a little bit so that you can get it thinner. Um, and so I'll have it more like that to wind into the wool. So I don't know, I feel like I misspoke last week when I said it, I thought it was a really short staple length because I think they have actually, they're one of the longer wool breeds from the little bit of reading that I did. But I don't know, I would love to learn more and just get more knowledgeable. And I think it's, it's really fun to do these spinning projects and not to just be working with like beautiful fiber, but also start getting just some natural wool of specific breeds and just see what it feels like to spin a bunch of different types of sheep and different types of fiber. Um, and so that's something that I would like to bring to you guys too. Fiber Love Diary, I think her name is Trisha. She is currently doing like a breed study and she has been going through, um, it's really loud. She's been going through like a whole bunch of different breeds of sheep and like keeping really detailed records on like staple length and it's a very low flying plane. Um, get this up a little bit more again. Yeah, so she's been um, she's been doing a breed study on her channel, Fiber Love Diary, um, and I only found her recently, but I've been really enjoying watching her and. She has a spinning wheel, so she's able to do everything on the spinning wheel. So she can spin like two breeds of sheep at a time on a weekly basis and like go through an ounce of each of them and like compare them. But I think that she, she signed up and she got sent like a whole bunch of different um, breeds of sheep to spin her way through. And so she's been documenting it on her channel. And yeah, I think something like that um, to do as like a personal, in, as like a personal part of my journey to learn more about the different fibers and the sheep breeds um, and how they spin up would be would be something that's really cool. So anyway, <laughs> this is Cotswold and this is my first, I mean, I guess the rainbow one was Merino and I've spun, my very first sheep was Targi. And then I think the other two that I have spun are both blue-faced Lester. So this is a new breed for me. And I am going to probably dye this when I am all done spinning it because, I mean, I could leave it natural. Maybe I'll leave some of it natural and maybe I'll dye part of it. I don't know, but I like experimenting with the dyeing too. So I think that'll be fun. But that is everything that I have to share with you guys today. And I have to be really careful not to go over an hour today because I do need to get Owen off of the school bus. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And as always, if you're not yet subscribed, I would love to have you join me every time I have a new video. So please hit that subscribe button to everybody who is subscribed already. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming back week after week. We've been doing this for like six months now. And my semester is wrapping up. I have a few weeks um, with a little bit of a lighter schedule and so I'm hoping to get 
uh, podcasting again on a weekly basis for the foreseeable future as much as I can. So I know I got I had to space them out a little bit over the last month or two, but I think um, we are now finally reaching a point where my schedule is relaxing for the time being and I can I can update you guys every week I hope so yeah so this was really fun to come back so quickly this time after just a week instead of two so I hope that I'll be back next week as well and uh, I hope that you guys are all having as beautiful a day as I am here on Long Island and I hope to see you guys in my next podcast bye